the theme now is experience God evangelism and first I will explain also what is being filled with the Holy Spirit because uh, this method of evangelism uh, would require that we have experienced the Holy Spirit powerfully that we have you know that we have been filled with the Holy Spirit and then we pray for people they can experience God and then we, did, we can lead them to Christ so first thing is uh, what does it mean uh, to be filled with the Holy Spirit continually now some people have the misunderstanding they thought that uh, it just you know uh, uh, someone pray for them and they fall down and then that's being filled with the Holy Spirit that's not true that is just one experience. Uh, if the person keep the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon him, after that, then he is he can be filled continually. But if it's just a one-time experience, it doesn't necessarily mean that, and it doesn't have to fall down. You know, if a person falls down and experiences the peace and joy and the power of God, that's great. But it's not the falling down; it's what he experiences that is important. So it's experienced the presence of God and can keep the presence of God. That is what is most important, okay? So being filled with the Holy Spirit means having a very intimate relationship with God, that, that we can experience Him any time, that we can experience His presence and uh, experience His peace and love and joy or power, uh, wh whatever way we can experience Him. And then two, turning away from sins, that... We know that God doesn't like sin. So when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, then we turn away from the sins. And then three, follow God's will and the Great Commission. So when a person is filled with the Holy Spirit, then he wants to follow God's will. If he doesn't follow God's will, then it's just an experience. Just an experience. Uh, being filled with the Holy Spirit, Spirit means that the Holy Spirit really delights in a person and he is happy. Now every Christian has the Holy Spirit. What does it mean to be filled? It's like this, in a cup, okay? It's like in a cup that, okay, now, if you think of the water inside, it, you know, for a Christian that is not filled with the Holy Spirit, maybe the Holy Spirit is filled to a certain little uh, extent. And then if he loves God more and obey Him more and, and uh, praise God a lot, then he can be filled more and more and uh, now sometimes uh, there can be a breakthrough. The breakthrough can, be, can come from a long time loving God, or opening the heart to God more and more, and then the presence of God will come higher and higher. And sometimes it can come in a meeting when there is laying on of hands, or when there is a powerful prayer meeting, and the people are open to God, or there is a powerful praise and worship time, and the people are open to God, and then they experience a stronger infilling of the Holy Spirit but that needs to be kept if it's not kept then it's it's uh, just going to go down actually uh, if you have gone to spirit field meetings you find that when someone lay hand on you and you experience power or love or joy and then at the end of the meeting you find that the experience goes down already and then when you go home, it's weaker. Next day is weaker. So it goes down more and more. So it needs to be kept that we need to have this continual relationship with God. And it has to be kept with effort, with strong effort. So uh, the person will follow God's will and the Great Commission to preach the gospel and teach everyone to obey whatever God, uh, Jesus has taught us and dedicate our lives to God, that we give our life to God, that God take control of my life, take over my life. And then five, doing things for God's glory and not our glory. It's not for our own glory. And can experience God's presence and work anytime. We pray and can help people to experience God and His work. Now this is uh, one definition of mine that, that the person is being filled with the Holy Spirit, they can, he can experience God's presence anytime he pray. And then he can help people to experience God and His work when he pray for people. And I would uh, define that as being filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, that's just 
from experience that you know that we can experience His presence. Now I share with you how I experienced the Holy Spirit, uh, the infilling in 1998, when an evangelist from Argentina, he's called Carlos Anacondia. Uh, he was a powerfully uh, spirit-filled person, and he came to Hong Kong, and then he. Uh, it was in a meeting. There were many, many people there. He laid hand on, and then the moment he touched me, I felt power like electricity enter me, and I felt very powerful love enter me. The love was so powerful that I cried for a long time, and I said, "I never knew I can experience God's love like that." It was pure love. It was holy love, and and it was so touching. I cried for a long time because I, I just, I was touched by God's love. Not because of sadness. It's not because of sadness. It's because of the, uh, the joy and the love that I experienced. And, and I said to myself, I want to keep this person. So I spent much time praying every day after that. And then a few days later, one of my members asked me to pray for her, to lay hand on her to drive out demons. Because I took a number of my members to the meeting, and then uh, I, I lay hand on her, and then she felt something left her from the fingers and from her toes. And also, I lay hand on the people who were present, and then one person says she experienced power. And then I lay hand on more people, and they experienced the presence of God. They experienced peace, love, joy, and some people cry for a long time. They were touched by the love of God. They were healed, uh, have inner healing. And so I said, wow, this is wonderful. First, I can experience Him anytime I pray. I can experience His power, and later I experience His joy. Anytime I pray, the joy will just flow out. Hallelujah! And the joy flow out. And so I said, wow, this is great. And then I pray for my church members, and they experience love and joy and a change of life and many of them dedicate their life to God and follow God and love God and and that was so wonderful it was so different from before and then my teaching changed my teaching became much more powerful and my teaching remained to be biblical I you know I searched the Bible about the Holy Spirit and also I went to different meetings uh, different spirit-filled meetings, but I was disappointed many times because I found that in many meetings they don't talk much about the Bible, they don't preach on the Bible, they don't explain the Bible verses, and they have practices that practices that were not from the Bible. So I'm not, you know, people ask me, "Are you charismatic?" I said, "No, I'm not charismatic. I'm spirit-filled according to the Bible." I said. I can experience His presence anytime. I can experience His joy anytime. I can experience His love, His power anytime. I pray, and I pray for people. People can experience the peace and love and joy. And my life is changed, and I'm motivated to change, uh, to dedicate my life to God. And I lay hand on people, and they can experience God's presence. It helps me in my evangelism and in. Helping people to be revived spiritually, so my whole, you know, my spiritual life is changed. My uh, ministry is changed. It becomes much more powerful, and it's based on the Bible because the Bible talk about laying on of hands for healing and for people to experience the Holy Spirit, and also uh, that the Bible talks about loving God, praising God, and then the presence of God will be stronger. That He. He dwells in the presence, uh, the praise of his people. So I found that is true. So I just, basically, I'm just loving God and praising God all the time and obeying Him all the time and glorifying Him all the time. And His presence comes to me all the time, and He blesses my ministry. So I thank God for all this, and I said, "Wow, God, this is wonderful. This is wonderful. It changes my life, and it motivates me to." To serve God, and I want to serve God as long as I can. I want to serve God for as long as I can. When, if if God give me a hundred years to live, I will serve God until I die. The moment I die, I I you know, I 
I can go to heaven any time now. I like to go to heaven. But I prefer to stay so I can bless more people, help more people, and bring to revival to more people. That's what I want. Okay, now, ways that we can experience the Holy Spirit. So we know that these are from the work of the Holy Spirit. We can experience His peace. Jesus said in John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. And then, burdens can go away. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. And then the body in rest and comfort. Psalm 16, 9, Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope. So the body can rest in hope. And many people said, Wow, my body feels peaceful and comfort. I feel comfort over my body. So many people experience this peace and the burdens go away and also comfort over the body. And love, Romans 5, 5, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who, has, who was given to us that we can experience His love. And 5, inner healing, Isaiah 61, 1, He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. I pray for many people and then they, they will heal. Uh, in, uh, they have inner healing and they cry and they felt the love of God. And 6, physical healing, Isaiah 53, through, uh, five by his stripes we are healed, and also uh, lay hand. You can lay hand on the sick, and they'll be healed. In Mark uh, uh, sixteen, and then demons being driven out. Mark sixteen seventeen. In my name they'll cast out demons. So these are ways that we can experience the the Holy Spirit. And then eight, physically experiencing the swaying of the body, falling or power. Now. It's scriptural. In John, uh, for John, the Apostle John in Revelation 1.17, and when John saw Jesus, he fell at his feet as dead. So he fell down as, as soon as he saw Jesus. And then Paul in Acts 9.4, then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? So he fell to the ground when he saw this great light. From heaven. And then Daniel 10 9, while I heard the sound of his, of his words, I was in deep sleep on my face with my face to the ground. So when he heard the voice, uh, the sound of, of his words, of this person that appeared to him, that he fell to the ground. And in 2 uh, Chronicles 5 14, so that the priest could not continue ministering because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. So the glory of God filled the house of the Lord when Solomon dedicated the temple to God, and the priest could not stand. So when God's presence, very powerful people cannot stand. And then when it's not so powerful, or when the person is not so open, he, will, he might not fall, but he, he feels his body swaying. Now this is a natural swing. Like if I pray now, Hallelujah. 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 Then my body will sway. Especially when you stand, uh, you can sway. And this is one easy way to, to sense the presence of God. You sense the swing of the body. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And then you can feel the swing of the body. And the more open you are, hallelujah, and the swing will become stronger. And then for me, the joy will come. The moment, anytime I think of God, hallelujah, and the joy will come. So these are ways that we can experience His presence. Now, if you have not experienced that, I encourage you to you know, when I lead the prayer, you open your heart, you stand up, you relax your body, and then you cry out to God, your, your heart flows to God. Your voice flows to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's like your soul flies to God, comes to God, and then you can experience Him more and more. So this is a process of growing that we can get closer and closer to God. Okay? So we can use this for evangelism. Okay, so what I found out that when I, after experienced the Holy Spirit, 
I lay hand on people and then they can experience, uh, experience the Holy Spirit. And then I, uh, I ask them, have you experienced anything? Because I felt power. When I lay hand on them, I felt power. I felt something on the fingers. I also felt power to my body. When I lay hand on people who are open, I can feel power to my body. I can feel power on my fingers. And so I ask them, have you experienced anything during the prayer? And then they say, yes, I've experienced peace or burdens go away. And then I say, this is from God. If God can bless you like that, can, do you want uh, to, uh, to be blessed by God for your whole lifetime? And then they say they're willing and then I will lead them to, to uh, repentance and tell them about Jesus' salvation and then uh, lead them to, to pray to receive the forgiveness of God. So that's what I did. And then I, I call it experience God evangelism, that we help people to experience God and then bring them to Jesus. And I've, ha I've helped many people to be filled with the Holy Spirit and experience God and to believe in Jesus. Now, how to be filled with the Holy Spirit continually? First, we repent and turn away from all sins because God hates sins. And then love and follow the Bible. Very important. Some people, they experience the Holy Spirit and they don't pay attention to the Bible. You know, our teaching should come from the Bible. There are many charismatics who just, you know, preach on experience. They might use a Bible verse and then they, they quote it and then they just say a few sentences and then they keep going and then just talk about experience. Now, it should not be like that because we want the people to understand the Bible and to follow the Bible. And the teaching should all f follow the Bible. But there are many charismatics that, that uh, do things that are not necessary from the Bible. For instance, I named some of this. They, they talk about the more you serve God, the more you're dedicated to God, then, then uh, Satan can attack you more. Now that doesn't make sense. Because Jesus said when you go and preach the gospel and then you teach people to obey everything I taught, then Jesus said, I'll be with you always to the end of ages. So then Jesus will be with us. Then, so Satan would not be able to attack us. Satan would attack us only when we sin. So the cause of attack is from sin, not from serving God. Not from driving demons from people. I've driven out demons from many people. And, you know, I'm not attacked. I don't feel attacked from Satan. So it's, it's, the relationship with God, a strong relationship with God and take care of all our sins. Whenever we sin, we immediately say, please, Lord, I'm sorry for my sin. Please forgive me. And, and uh, realize that sins are very serious. And uh, then we will not be attacked. And then other ways that people uh, misunderstand uh, the, the teaching of the generation curse. That they say that, you know, if you're... Uh, parents, your grandparents, great-grandparents, if they sin, then God will uh, pursue their sins on us. Uh, but, you know, the, the Bible verse there says, you know, in uh, Exodus 20, uh, it says that, but for those who love me, you know, I will bless him, I'll, I'll, I'll show my love to him for, to, uh, for thousands of generations. So, when we love God, then God will bless us. So, the Actually, that verse doesn't talk about cursing. It talks about uh, God, you know, uh, seeking the... Uh, because I memorized the Bible verse in Chinese that seeking after the sin of the person or, or chasing after the sin of the person or punishing. So it's just punishing. It's not, it's not, um, it's not cursing. And then when we love God and obey God, and turn away from sin will not be cursed. But some people will say, okay, even if you love God, then you have to think of the sins of your parents, great parents, parents and great grandparents, and then, uh, and then you ask God to forgive them, and then uh, cut off from the curses from them. That, you know, that's not necessary. And some people, they worry because they say, well, I don't know if I have exhausted all the sins of my parents by asking God to forgive all of them. If I have not asked for forgiveness, then God will, will punish me and curse me. That's not biblical. So in the charismatic church, uh, in the charismatic movement, very often people emphasize on the attack of Satan. 
so much that people fear. They, they're afraid of Satan. But Jesus said, you know, I've given you the authority to trample on snakes and scorpions, and then nothing can harm you. That, so we have the authority when we have a close relationship with God and take care of our sin. We don't have to worry about uh, uh, attack from demons. When we have a close relationship with God, even when they try to attack us, they cannot attack us because God will protect us. Protect us. If any attack is from sins, when a Christian sin, then he can lose his uh, ministry, he can lose his marriage, he can lose the reputation and the trust of the people. That's from his sins, not from his ministry, not from serving God. Okay, so we follow the Bible. We, any teaching we hear, we should examine uh, w with the Bible, whether this is from the Bible. And then believe that God wants to fill us. So when we pray, we say, Lord, I know that you want to fill me. It's you who wants to fill me. You want to have a close relationship with me. So when I love you and adore you, you fill me for sure. Thank you, Lord. I love you. I love you. I adore you. Hallelujah. And then, four, spend long hours loving God and hungering for God. So spend long time loving God, delighting in God. God, I like you. God, I like you. I desire you. I want you. I need you. I thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I need you. And then five, obey God in every area, especially the Great Commandment and the Great Commission. So, the great commandment is to love the Lord our God with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, all my strength, and to preach the gospel and also to uh, teach people to obey everything Jesus has taught us. So obey God in every area that we will want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, and then take care of problems in our lives, our emotions, or how we are affected by people, our anger, our negative thinking, or any kind of uh, sinful habits and laying on of hands by a spirit-filled person and spirit-filled meetings are helpful. So if we uh, attend sp uh, uh, spirit-filled meetings and we worship God, then, um, then it's helpful and a spirit-filled person lay hands on, on us. Now, but there are many people who claim to be spirit-filled, actually they might have demons. Why? Because many people, they just want money. There are people, there are evangelists just want money and they would even seek the help of evil spirit. So don't just receive the laying on of hands by anyone. Discern the teaching of the evangelists. Some evangelists, they just, they just want money and then they don't talk about the Bible. They don't preach on the Bible. And they have teachings that it's not from the Bible, it's from the tradition of the charismatic movement. The charismatic movement have some teachings that are not from the Bible. So people just follow other people. They don't study the Bible. We need to study the Bible to find out the teachings from God. Okay, so experience God evangelism. First thing is to have compassion on people. Okay, now... Uh, uh, in order to save time, I won't talk about this part, but the main thing is we want people to be saved. We want to bring the gospel to more people. We want, want, to, we want to have compassion on them because if they don't have Jesus, they'll go to hell forever. So we want to tell people even if they reject us. You know, when people reject me, I still continue to talk about Jesus. I still continue. But I will find ways how to talk you know, uh, about Jesus, especially talk about how Jesus will bless them will give them joy and peace and give them healing and, and bless their life. So do you want Jesus to bless your life and give them good testimonies from people? Okay, here. And then experience God evangelism process. First, converse with the person and listen and respond to the feelings and needs. So we talk with them and respond to the feelings and needs. So if a person says, oh, I'm, I, I, I'm unhappy, then we'll respond to the feeling. Now, some people don't respond to the feeling. They just tell them what to do. They'll just say, okay, pray, and then you'll, you'll be happy again. That is not responding to the, to the feelings. They're just telling them what to do. And we can say, well, I heard that you are unhappy. Uh, can you tell me what happened? 
uh, uh, what happened to you? And uh, uh, and then the person says, oh, you know, someone hurts me. And then we'll say, uh, we we agree with them that that what happened could affect the emotions. We'll say, yeah, I know that that could affect your emotions. That the person hurts you is is unreasonable, and that uh, that make you feel bad, uh, make you feel hurt. So we agree with them. Now it doesn't mean we agree that the person should stay hurt all the time. But we agree that when the person is hurt, that he will feel hurt. That is natural, so we agree with that. But we don't. It doesn't mean oh, it's okay to be angry with the person. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying I agree that when that happens to you, you feel unhappy. And then share how we ourselves. Uh, let me explain more of this. So don't just tell people what to do. When someone says, "Oh, I'm unhappy. I'm sick." Uh, don't just say pray and uh, don't just tell people what to do. But we will uh, say, oh, I know it's uh, it hurts you now. I know you feel unhappy now. I know it's it's difficult for you now. So we name the difficulty, and we can ask them to talk about it. Tell me more about it. So the person see that we we pay attention to them. We listen to them. This caring is important that we listen to them, and then two share how we or someone else had similar problems and experience help from God, so we can share with them how we ourselves experience God or we pray for someone and they experience God. So we need to build up this experience that we pray for more and more people. I pray for many many people, and you can look, you know, a search in YouTube, look for Pastor Yip, and then you can see. Uh, There was a playlist uh, called "Experience Holy Spirit," and then you can see many people share about how they experience the Holy Spirit. So, if we have all this experience, we can share with people how we have prayed for people and they experience the Holy Spirit. And so we uh, we tell them this, and then invite them to receive the laying on of hands. So, do you want me to lay hand on you so that you can experience His help, His peace, His love, His healing, and then. Four in the prayer, lead the person to relax and enjoy God, and to open the heart to love God. So we tell the person, just relax and think about God. Think about the goodness of God. God is so good. God is so good. God is. God loves us so much, and and just relax. Think about the love of God. God, you're blessing us. God, you're coming to us to bless us. God, you're with me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And then five. After the prayer, we'll say, "Please keep your eyes closed. Have you experienced anything during the prayer?" So the reason why the person keep the eyes closed so that he would not be distracted. So we'll say, "Please keep your eyes closed. Have you experienced anything during the prayer?" And then if the person, you know, if the person is not sure what we mean, then we say, "Did you experience anything in your heart, in your body? Have you experienced any peace?" The burdens go away. Do you feel comfort over your body? And some people will feel lightness. Is feeling light, or joy, or love, or healing. If the person ex- experiences some work from God, we can explain from the Bible that this works. Uh, these are works of the Holy Spirit. Now I, I just explain those experience. Um, here are the are uh, what. Pe- How people can experience the Holy Spirit: peace, burdens removed, body in rest and comfort, love, inner healing, physical healing, demons being driven out, and also physically feeling the swaying of the body or falling down. So, if they have experienced this, we'll tell them this is from the Bible. That God says that we can experience Him when we come to Him, and then we can say. You have experienced the work of God. Do you want God to bless your whole life? So we ask him, Do you want God to bless your whole life? And then, if He's willing, then explain that Jesus is God and has died for our sins to forgive our sins and give us eternal life. Ask if He is willing to accept Jesus as His Savior. So, if the person is willing, then we say, Jesus is God. He came to the world and He died for us on the cross,、uh, as prophesied in the Bible. And then we are,、uh, we are. Then he forgive our sins and wash away our sins, and then we can have eternal life. 
And uh, now He will bless us, we will love Him and obey Him, and, and we'll experience His help, and He will bless us, and then in forever in the future we'll have ex eternal life in heaven. So, are you willing to accept Jesus as your Savior? And then, then we can use the sinner's prayer here. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that you are God. I'm sorry for my sins. I've hurt other people's feelings. I've yelled at people. I've lied. I have been greedy and selfish. Thank you for dying on the cross for, uh, to pay for the penalties of my sins. Please forgive my sins and give me eternal life. Thank you for loving me and giving me eternal life. I love you. I'm willing to follow you and love you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And then we can ask the person, did you sincerely pray the prayer? Sincerely repent of your sin and ask God to forgive you? If you have, then Jesus has already forgiven you. And then ask the person if he has sincerely repented of his sins and asked Jesus to be his, his Savior. If he says he has, then we can tell them that the Bible promises us that he's forgiven and will have eternal life. And then we should tell the people how, how tell the person how he can continue to follow God. So continue to repent of his sins, continue to trust in Jesus as his Savior. Remember these are the six fruits of salvation. To continue to repent, trust in Jesus as Savior, and have a close uh, personal relationship with God by reading the Bible, praying, and praising God. So we, uh, uh, we abide in Jesus and He will abide in us and we will bear much fruit. So continue to have a personal relationship with God and going to church to worship God. And then D, love God with all your heart. He's so good to you. He, he has blessed you, so thank God and love God. And obey Him, especially to tell people about Jesus and to follow Jesus. And serve God. Anything we do to glorify God and bless people are serving God. So we explain to them that how they can, uh, uh, how they can follow God. And then how can we use experience God evangelism? 